All right, so quick update. We got we're, we got the cooling system done. I believe it's done. Every hose is connected. Man, this turned out awesome. Check this out. So here's that rear hose that goes to our uh, transmission cooler. I love how this turned out. These are good hose clamps and high quality hose. This one comes forward. That's the valve we talked about. So this valve opens and shuts. I'm computer controlled, so it'll, it basically can turn the coolant flow on and off to that heat exchanger. So if the transmission needs to warm up, this valve shuts. No water flows through the cooler, so the transmission can warm up. And then, of course, if it needs cooling, the valve opens, and there you go. So that's a nice feature. <clears throat> Got that hooked up. All of this is uh, final installed, as long as nothing happens that forces us to take it apart. This is all done. Check this out. So this is where the water pump used to go. Now we have this billet adapter. We've got a hard pipe coming here, and we just got a silicon coupler with a couple hose clamps. And uh, I really like this. That is, I'm very happy with how that turned out. <clears throat> so pretty slick. We even got uh, this hooked up because we wanted to say it was done, and I was like, oh, well, we got to hook that little hose up. So that runs over to the uh, expansion tank. So cooling system's done. Uh, in fact, we've even worked on some other stuff. So this is the uh, crankcase vent. For now, the hose is just laying under there. Might leave that for now. It needs to go to a catch can. I have a catch can. I have, actually have three, but this is the one that the last one I bought was this guy. It's got a pair of like 12 AM, but I don't, to use it, I really need to like weld a bung onto the valve cover. And I thought about it and I was like, man, I don't really need to, God, that's a good angle. <laughs> Damn, that's a good looking view. Anyway, I didn't want to deal with it at the time. I don't think it's really necessary as far as like crankcase ventilation. This setup worked pretty well. Damn, that is a good picture. Anyway, all right, <clears throat> moving on along. Maybe come back to that. But I had a problem. My, uh, my hood was hitting my air filter. So we're going to make a change. Not sure how permanent this is going to be, but anyway, we're going to do this. Uh, I took the filter apart, so I can't show you. I'll show you in a minute. But anyway, this piece goes on the filter. I made this a long time ago, like a year or two ago. And I basically glued a giant coupler right into the filter. This is what I needed. And uh, one problem with this, if you look in here, so the air filter, <clears throat> let me show you. Here's the inlet of the filter. This thing is gigantic. Like, that's awesome. This piece clicks in like it snaps into this. Okay, so far so good. But see this wall that's created here? It's actually up here too, but I kind of filled it in with silicon. That could probably be like slightly smooth, but it's not bad. But down here, that's pretty egregious. There's a huge step right there. So flow that's coming in from the filter just runs into that wall. Now, when I did this, I filled all of this. This is 100% fill. This is like a big block of like rubber, plastic, RTV, whatever. This stuff cures fairly hard. So what we're gonna attempt is I've got a finger sander now. I'm gonna go put some coarse sandpaper and see if I can go in here and like radius this because I've got material under this. So there's room to work with and if that, if I can sand this, which I think I can, I don't know, maybe I can. If I can, that means I'll be able to radius this and that'll help the flow. Um, <clears throat> this is probably like tangent camera time, but let me explain why this is so important. This could actually be like five or 10 or 15 horsepower just doing that. That might sound crazy, but let me explain why. If you've ever looked at a compressor map on a turbo, you'll see like on the X axis, you have a uh, pounds per minute. That's your mass flow rate. And on your y-axis, the up and down, that's your uh, pressure ratio. Well, pressure ratio is not boost. Pressure ratio is the ratio of the pressure coming out of the turbo compared to the pressure going into the turbo. So if you look at a pressure ratio and you're assuming that I've got atmospheric air pressure going in the turbo, well, that's a, that assumption could be very wrong. Um, I haven't actually measured this on a turbo setup, but I had a supercharger setup on this car uh, several years ago. And I actually did pressure measurements and I could, I was astonished at how much pressure drop. This was the best filter I tested. Uh, this is a pretty damn big filter. It's got like a filter built into that section. This is a, this is from AutoZone. It's a Spectra. Actually this, I tested uh, two or three different filters and this is the one that tested the best. I tested a, uh, I think I have it somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. I'll show you. Yeah, so I found it. This is another one of the filters that I did in my test. This is a dry flow. I think it's AEM or somebody. It also has a big filter built on the end. In fact, we stand these both up next to each other. 
the filter on this one is actually a lot bigger. There's a comparison. It's deeper, larger diameter. So it looks like this one would flow better as far as, you know, less pressure drop for the same airflow. But that was not the case when I measured it. When I measured it, this is actually the highest performing as for, not maybe not for filtration, but as far as airflow, this actually had the least pressure drop. However, <clears throat> this is what's key. It actually had a lot of pressure drop. So that's why this stuff matters. And that was just anyway, I don't, I don't remember everything on that setup. That was years ago. My point is when you look at a turbo and you're like, hey, I'm running this much boost, I'm looking at a compressor map, you're just assuming that you're getting atmospheric pressure into the inlet of the turbo. You may not be, so it's a big deal. So anyway, to that point, we're going to get a 4-inch pipe run from the turbo to the air filter, and we're going to do our damnedest to uh, minimize pressure drop, so don't put sharp, tight bends. You can see this bend here is super gradual. Um, also, there's a straight section right here going into the turbo, that's probably beneficial like a lot of times you don't want to have straight flow going into an inlet of a pump you don't want to have like a sharp bend because it can cause anyway cfd stuff i'm not an expert at it but it's bad it's good it's better to have a straight shot going in so we are going to try to do that and like i said we're going to try radiusing this i'll show you if it works if it doesn't well i don't know we're going to try it i bet it's going to work and see if we can't make this flow a little better Okay, so we just got done sanding and rinsing this off. What a difference that made. So you guys might have to go back in the video to see what it looked like before. That's a whole different part now. So that's so much better. We, you can see all this huge area here. There used to be a big wall there. And now it's just a radius. You can see here there's a little low spot where we didn't quite get enough RTV. But we just got 95% of the improvement with the sanding we did. So... I'm not going to worry about a little spot like that. Like I said, we just got most of the benefit. Same thing here. There, that wall actually started way up here, and then it just peaked down here. So all this area now flows better than it used to. And then last thing, we went ahead and this could use a little work. I might touch that, but we tried to bell mouth that a little bit. It's not perfect. That could probably use a little help, but it's better than it was. So overall, 10 minutes of sanding and 10 minutes of sweeping and rinsing off, but... Now we got a part that uh, that should definitely flow better. So nice little improvement. All right, so this is the part back on the filter. That just looks better now. It's wide open, so that's awesome. Much improved. Okay, now we get back to building our intake. Okay, so here's our air filter setup. Not sure if this is going to be permanent or not. Uh, I actually haven't tested to see if it clears the hood. I just assume that now it'll clear the hood. I guess I don't actually know that. But uh, assuming it clears the hood, maybe this is okay. So what I'm worried about is the silicon collapsing. So for example, if you launch really hard, the weight of this filter pushing back, if you push hard enough, like eventually I could make this buckle. Now, would that actually happen? I don't know, but if it did, that would choke the turbo. So that would be very undesirable. Yeah, there's a good view. If I push that enough, Granted, I was pushing kind of hard, but you get the idea. I mean, it's a drag car. It's going to launch hard, so. And then there's pressure. If there's enough pressure, that could collapse. So this is probably not permanent. This section's okay because there's a coupler right there. But I may buy an elbow, like a metal one instead of silicon, to, do, uh, to make that piece. But we're just going to do this for now, at least so we can move forward. But I'll think about it. We might replace that with metal to be safe. But... Let me go check and see if the hood shuts. That's probably important. Ah, we could, I mean, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we just checked. The hood does close, but it's actually still hitting. The, uh, I think it's this piece here. When you close the hood, actually comes down and touches the turbo. So, or hits the pipe on the turbo. So, not ideal. So, yeah, we're gonna have to change that. But anyway, we got that for now. We'll uh, see if we can't come up with something a little better. But I think it looks cool. Having a big pipe on the turbo. I like the look at least. All right, well, I don't know what's next, but let's keep going. Man, so we've been working for hours. This is really starting to look like a runner. Let me show you. I don't even know if I remember everything I did. I've been just running hoses. So here's uh, our first zip ties. So this is an air pressure regulator that goes from zero to 30 PSI. 
I've always run mechanical boost control because it is extremely predictable and extremely reliable. And if you do it right, it actually performs pretty well as far as spool goes. So here's our setup. We've got a tile external gate. Now the bottom port right here, this hose just loops over to our boost pipe. So whatever the engine pressure uh, in the boost pipe coming out of the turbo, that goes here. So if it gets high enough, it'll push the gate open, right? I don't even know what springs in this thing, but it doesn't matter. Uh, however, you might want to run more boost. So this is an air pressure regulator. It also tees here to the boost pipe. Air comes in here, but this regulates it to some value. And you can just take this, pop it out, and you can turn this. And that's how you adjust your boost. Lock it in like that so it doesn't change. So what this does is, you know, I could be running, say, 40 pounds of boost. Let's, I don't know what this is, but let's just say it's a 10 PSI spring and I want to run 40 pounds. Well, what you do is you set your regulator to 30 pounds. So that way, you, uh, when you get to 10, the gate will open. Well, when you get to 10 pounds, it won't open because it'll have 10 pounds here canceling it out. And that'll be true all the way to 30. And then after 30, this stops climbing. So once you get to 40, it'll open because you'll have 10 PSI differential across the uh, wastegate. So that's what's nice about these. Like I said, I don't remember. I probably, my guess is I got something between 10 and 20 pound spring. Doesn't matter. I'm probably not going to be running low boost. So anyway, we got these hooked up. I always use quarter inch uh, fuel hose for this. The reason is it's incredibly durable. It's strong. It's a it's got abrasion resistance. You can put an actual hose clamp on these and tighten them down. Not a big fan of vacuum hoses. I'd, I'm probably going to use one vacuum hose on this motor, but generally I just run uh, these anywhere I can because I just they're durable. So anyway, we ran these two hoses, this, the boost pipe, our blow off valve. There's a hose looping around. I run these across the back firewall. These are kind of close. We're going to have to heat shield those or something, but worry about that later. Uh, air filter's looking good. Uh, let's see, coming back over here. So that one's capped. We're not using it. This is for the blow off valve. This is for, this is probably going to do two things. So here's our map. I think this is either, a, I don't know, three or four bar, maybe a four bar map. I have a four bar and I don't remember which one it is. So maybe it's this one. We should probably test it. But I bolted it down, found a nice spot right there. And uh, this hose just has to go here, so not a big deal. And then our regulator, this thing needs a vacuum reference as well. So here's, you know, as you can probably guess, we got to get a T-fitting and we're just going to basically go here and then zoom up here and catch the uh, regulator. So that'll be pretty easy. And both of those have this small, these aren't quarter inch, this is like eighth inch. I could change this one, but this I can't do much about. So. We're just going to use vacuum hose for that one, but we'll zip tie them and test to make sure that they're going to hold. Uh, I don't remember. That's probably enough. We might have done a couple other things. I don't remember. I guess we ran the brake booster hose. I have a custom one. I mean, custom is just a piece of hose with a check valve, but I already put it away. But I actually purchased the metal pipe and the factory hose that goes here. And I was going to install it and I was looking at it and it's kind of in the way. And then I thought about it and I was like, well, okay, how about this? Whichever one's lighter. Well, the custom one is lighter. The factory one with the two hoses was like 0.82. This one was 0.6. And this one even had the clamps. So it was lighter to do that one. So we ran it. Uh, plus we already had it made, so it was easy to install. So yeah, got a ton of stuff going. Man, I am happy. This thing looks like it's ready to start. It's not ready to start. There's no wires, but damn, it's getting close. This is really looking like a running car. And it's looking pretty good. I'm real happy with how this looks. So, don't know what else to say. Anyway, it's late. We are going to knock off for the night. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow's our last day before I got a had vacation, so I've been working on the car a lot. But I got to go back. I got to go back to work in a couple days. I know, annoying, but you know, got to be able to afford to build the car. So that's going to be it for now. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. And until next time, y'all take it easy.